Hey there, Twisters. I hope you guys are having a fantastic time tuning into the playoffs so far. In this video, I'm going to rank all 16 Stanley Cup playoff teams by their urgency to win this year's Stanley Cup. So the way that I determined my rankings was I looked at a few factors, including the team's performance this year and their potential for their for their future, previous history in the postseason. I looked at the fan base, of course, the big contracts that are coming up in the offseason, so UFAs and RFAs as well, and just the age of the team as well, I think, is a factor. So I want to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Who are the top three teams in terms of urgency to win the Stanley Cup this year? So let me know your thoughts down there. And guys, don't forget, we're going to be live on the channel every day. There's a playoff game, so make sure you don't miss out on the action. So hit the red subscribe button down below. Join our welcoming hockey community. We are fans of all types out here, so it'd be fantastic to see you joining us for the postseason. So without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to start from the bottom with the least urgent team, and that is, of course, the two-time defending Stanley Cup champion, the Tampa Bay Lightning. They've only missed the playoffs once since 2014. So even before they were winning cups, they were getting into the postseason. They went on that cup run in 2015 as well. The fans are very understanding. They're a very chill fan base. I've actually been to a game there. And Tampa Bay-based teams have done very well recently. Their biggest free agent is Andre Palat. So really, Tampa can still be pretty good for a number of years, or at least a couple of years, with guys like Point, Stamkos, career year for him, Kucherov, Vasilevsky, Hedman. So the list goes on in Tampa. In 15th, I actually have the Los Angeles Kings. This year, they are definitely playing with house money. Certainly, the media out there didn't expect LA to be quite that good, but they found themselves in third place in the division, and things could look up for them going forward as well with young guys like Byfield and Turcotte too. So they're getting this done while those guys haven't exactly emerged as top level talents just yet. Andreas Athanasiu is the biggest UFA going forward too. And Kempe is actually an RFA. But other than that, they still have Kopitar. They have Dowdy. They've been playing, of course, with him injured and with Arvidsson injured. We'll see if he returns for this series against the Oilers. And Dustin Brown, I know it's his final ride, but it's not like he's been contributing all that much to where they feel like they really, really need to keep him going forward. So for the for the Kings, they are definitely sitting pretty for the next uh, foreseeable future, I would say. In 14th, I have the St. Louis Blues. So they won the Stanley Cup final in 2019, and they've been very good otherwise. They have only missed the playoffs once in the past decade. The younger talent is starting to drive the bus for them. So in other words, even if guys like O'Reilly and Perron, who will be a UFA, even though those guys might be tailing off, guys like Robert Thomas, Jordan Kairou, Pavel Buchnevich, Ivan Barbashev, they are starting to produce very consistently on a game-in, game-out basis. And so St. Louis can still be pretty good for a number of years. Vile Husso will be a UFA. That is something to also watch out for. Is he the goaltender of the future for this team? Or does Jordan Biddington resurrect himself? In 13th, I actually have the New York Rangers. So this was the first time in five years in which they've legitimately qualified for the playoffs. And so they've done a really good job coming out of the rebuild. They still have great talents like Zibanejad, uh, Kreider, and Panarin. They are 30, more or less, so they will eventually get a little bit older and tail off. But it is still a little bit of a window for guys like Lafreniere and also Kako to sort of emerge as good middle six options at the very least. Shesterkin's only 26 years old. He could only get better, perhaps. The young defense could certainly improve as well over the next couple of years with Keandre Miller and, of course, the uh, reigning Norris Trophy winner from this past season in Adam Fox. And I think the fans would be pretty understanding if this team takes a, another couple of years to really emerge as a cup favorite. So eventually, I think the pressure will rise uh, for the New York Rangers. They have a lot of free agents as well, guys like Kopp, Strom, and Vitrano. But again, they've uh, achieved at least to the level the fans were expecting this season. And I think that a win in the first round would be great for them. Uh, but I don't think they're necessarily expected to be the last team dancing. In 12th is a team that I think will make a deep run, but there isn't a whole lot of pressure on them just yet. And that is Carolina. There is more pressure on other teams in the East, I believe. They've made the playoffs the last four years. They made that conference final back in 2019. I do think they're under expectations to kind of get back to that point. But even so, they have a great balance of players who are still in their prime and some young talent out there. Svechnikov and Ajo are still both under 25 years old. They could be good with a num for a number of years with the personnel that they have. Although depth might be a bit of an issue going forward, Trocek, Niederreiter, Max Domi, and Tony D'Angelo are among the free agents out there. So they do have some work to do in the offseason. 
but I do trust the job that Waddell has done and, of course, the coaching job of Rod Brindamore and his staff. So I expect something from Carolina this postseason, but even so, I think that they've got a pretty good cup contention window for the years ahead. For spots 11 through 9, there's kind of a similar theme here, and it might come as a surprise, but I actually have the Pittsburgh Penguins. The real reason why they're this far down and not further up is really because they gave those fans three Stanley Cups under Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and Chris Letang. The most recent one coming in 2017. It wasn't even that long ago. And talking to a couple of fans, there really isn't all that much expectation for Pittsburgh to do anything in the playoffs. Of course, they do have some big UFAs in the offseason. Evgeny Malkin, Chris Letang, Brian Russ, you know, who's been pretty integral in their Stanley Cup runs as well. Evan Rodriguez and Casey DeSmith as well. So they have some big question marks going forward with how to fill out the roster because the prospect pool isn't all that deep for the Penguins. But that said, they've given the fans a whole lot. They've made the playoffs 16 years in a row. And so that's why they're not as high as this next team or even the ones above them. So in 10th, I have a similar team, the Washington Capitals. This team is getting older as the years go by here. Ovechkin, Backstrom, Oshie, John Carlson, these guys are at least 32 or older. So they should eventually start tailing off here. There are question marks in net as well. You have RFAs with guys like Samsonov and also with Vanacek. But really, what is it going to take for this team to be a Stanley Cup favorite again? It could be a complete teardown for all we know. And they've exited the playoffs the past three postseasons in the first round. So ever since they won a Stanley Cup, they haven't won a playoff series. So to my understanding, the fans think that there is something more. Something has to be achieved here before Ovechkin rides off into the sunset. And in ninth, again, kind of continuing this trend for teams that are getting a little bit older, I have the Boston Bruins. They've lost Zidane Chara, David Krejci, and Tuka Rask. Next up could be Patrice Bergeron, for all we know. He is getting a little bit older in his career. They've only missed the playoffs twice since 2008. They've been to three finals since 2011 when they won the Stanley Cup. They also went in 2013 and 2019. So like Pittsburgh, they've given the fans a whole lot to appreciate. Lots of teams in Boston, of course, succeeding during this time as well. But the team is showing cracks, I think. And so really, I don't think the Bruins are necessarily favorited by the fan base to make a cup final run. But even so, they are kind of wishing that there was one last deep run for Patrice Bergeron. So Things are a little bit up in the air for the Bruins going forward. They could still be a playoff team, but again, that Atlantic division could really flip over in the next couple of years with some of the young talent that we're seeing. In eighth, I have the Nashville Predators. Now, I'm sure a lot of Preds fans out there were not expecting anything of the Preds in this postseason because Yusei Saros being injured really puts the team behind the eight ball. They definitely have to fix their backup goaltending issue, but who knows? Maybe Connor Ingram is that guy. What a performance he had in game two last night. I feel so bad that he got the loss. But you look at this team, especially at forward, do they really have enough going, going forward? So you have, of course, Duchesne, Johansson, and Granlin having really good seasons overall, but they're all about 30 years old. We can't really expect that much more from them. How good is Tanner Janot going to be? And who else really is there in that forward group? So Philip Forsberg will be a UFA. This team could be facing a bit of a cap crunch trying to fit him into the roster as well. And so I don't really think there are enough pieces for Nashville to be challenging for a Stanley Cup in the foreseeable future. So you would hope that with Saros, maybe he can bring the team on his back when he gets healthy and make a Stanley Cup final run. This team has been really good, though, over the last eight years. They've made the playoffs, but the fans probably have been wanting for one of those championships. So I've got Nashville right in the middle. In seventh, I have the Dallas Stars. So this is a team that has a lot of age in their court as well with guys like Sagan and Ben. They're not the oldest players out there, but you add in Joe Pavelski, a fantastic year he's had. Ryan Suter, of course. And this team just really, I don't think, has the full composition that they need to get back to the final. They were there in 2020. And so if they're going to do it, they got to ride a hot hand, a hot goaltender. Ottinger's had a really good season. Uh, certainly some question marks about who's going to back him up in the future if he really is the franchise goaltender. They could be a little bit thin at defense for all I know. You've got Haskinen, but of course Klingberg will be a UFA in the offseason. Robertson and Hintz, they are young stars in the NHL. But beyond that, how much do they have? Could they get back to this point next year? I really do have some doubts about that. So if anything, they have Calgary in a bit of a bind right now. The Flames only have scored one goal, and that was early in Game 1. So 
for all I know, the, the Stars could march on here and have a chance at at least making a bit of a dent in the playoffs. In sixth, I have the Minnesota Wild. Minnesota sports fans are tired of waiting for a championship. It's been 31 years since a major team won a title there in the four main professional sports. The Wild have never made the cup final, and they haven't been to the conference final since 2003. So they've gone, what now, almost 20 years without getting past the second round. The time is now. This is the best team they've ever assembled. Kaprizov, Fiala, Hartman had a wonderful career year. Spurgeon and Dumba on the backside, good, solid veteran defenseman this year. So the Wild need to make some progress here. Actually, the community here picked the Wild to win the Stanley Cup this year. That's how much confidence you have in them. Fiala is an RFA, and this team will be in a bit of a cap crunch going forward because of the buyouts to Parisi and Suter. So some question marks there. The Wild have a lot of talent. I think this is their year to at least win a round or two. Otherwise, the fans will not be happy whatsoever. In fifth, I have the Calgary Flames. Now, this is maybe a Stanley Cup contending roster. Certainly, that Daryl Sutter brand of hockey has been coming through in the postseason so far. And they've got Jacob Markstrom playing the best he ever has in goal. They have, of course, Johnny Gaudreau as a UFA. So we'll see what happens there. And they have Matthew Kachuk to sign as well as an RFA. So this team has some great veterans on this team. They have, of course, Lindholm off of, coming off a career year. So the time for them to strike is now. They have a couple of older veterans like Lewis and Lucic who won't be able to do this for much longer. And Daryl Sutter, we don't know how much longer he's going to last as a head coach, although he could be up for the Jack Adams Award this year. The Flames haven't made a Stanley Cup final since 2004, and that's the only time they've made it since 1989. So Canada needs to win a Stanley Cup now. Calgary, I think, does face some pressure, not as much as two more Canadian teams that I'll talk about, but I really think this is their time to get it done. They should at least get to the conference final with the talent that they have. In fourth, I have the Edmonton Oilers. I think they face a little bit more pressure than Calgary because they have arguably the two most talented players in hockey with McDavid and Dreisaitl. They don't want to be wasting the prime of their careers, but the Oilers, so far with them, one playoff series win, and as a franchise, one playoff series win since 2006, so there's no excuse for them to bow out in the first round. And I think there's a lot of pressure from the media for them to get into the conference final, I would have to say. They've brought in guys like Evander Kane, Duncan Keith, and Tyson Berry to help them get the job done. Now, they're doing this with Jay Woodcroft as their interim head coach, but given the overall composition of this roster and how much talent and leadership there is, sorry, my light just went out, I still think that the fans, the media, and the players will be holding themselves to a high standard in this postseason. In third, now some of you actually might have them in first, I have the Florida Panthers. No playoff series wins since 1996. There is no excuse for them to lose, I would think, in the first or the second round. They have to at least get to the conference final and go down swinging. This is the best team they've ever assembled. One of the best offenses we've seen in the last quarter century as well. The good thing for them is that they don't have too many big free agents going forward. Mason Marchment, Ben Sherratt, Noel Achari, among others. They still have Barkov and Huberdeau in the prime of their career. Sam Bennett, Sam Reinhart as well. Forsling, Ekblad, and Uyghur, despite his defensive deficiencies, on the backside as well. But even so, this team is too darn talented to not get it done. They have to at least make a concerted effort to win a Stanley Cup for Claude Giroux and Joe Thornton. Joe Thornton, it's going to be his final ride. I think the media going into this season actually favored Florida to do some damage in the postseason. And so it's up to them to get it done. I know they don't have the biggest fan base out there, but a lot of the hockey universe really thinks... Florida could be the next team lifting the Stanley Cup. So the pressure is on. In second, I have the Toronto Maple Leafs. No playoff series wins since 2004. No Stanley Cup final appearance since 1967. I really do think, that, of course, the media and like hockey Twitter and whatnot will drive the narrative. But even so, this team is under a lot of pressure. You're getting into the prime of Matthew's career. He just scored 60 goals this season. Marner had a fantastic year as well. So there's really no reason that despite who they're playing in the first round, they should be clear of that opponent in the first round and at least go down swinging in the second round against a team like the Florida Panthers. So no excuses for the Leafs to bow out in the first round, especially if it's a game seven. And I think that they're still going to be a talented team in the years to come with the core that they have, but they certainly will be facing some pressure to win one for Mark Giordano and Jason Spezza as well. And the team that's facing the most pressure, in my opinion, is the Colorado Avalanche. They'll still be very good for the years to come, but when you look at the depth and the secondary scoring, these guys are, go are going to be UFAs. So Nazem Kadri, 
Andre Burakovsky, Val Nichushkin, career setting year for him, and Darcy Kemper, among others. So, how good is this team going to be comparatively after this year? You have one of the best top lines in hockey. They are in the prime of their career as well. So, the Abs have to get it done. I think they have to at least go to the Stanley Cup final for the fans to be satisfied. They haven't been to the final since 2001. And as we know, they've had a little bit of trouble getting past the second round. You look at last season, they could have really done some damage in the playoffs. They were up 2-0 in that series against Vegas. And frankly, they blew it. And then Vegas lost to the Montreal Canadiens of all teams. So really, this was the preseason pick for most analysts out there, for a lot of you out there. This is their year to get it done. I think they're under the most pressure of any playoff team. But of course, I want to know your thoughts, guys, in the comments down below. So be sure to sound off down there. Maybe give me your top three and stick around. Once again, we're doing a stream every day. There's a playoff game. So keep it locked to Twisted Rister Hockey. Join our community. Hit that red subscribe button down below. Hit the thumbs up. That helps other Twisters like you discover the channel. And I'll see you around for more coverage throughout the playoffs in the form of live streams and videos like this one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Once again, I'm Nick. I'll catch you Twisters later. Ciao.